This is a fantastic question. I get asked all the time, how can I lower my spin rate? That way I can hit longer drives. Do I need a new driver? Am I hitting down on it? What should I do to actually lower the spin rate and increase the distance? To start this off, let me hit a couple shots. I'm gonna hit one with a really high spin rate and I'm gonna hit one with a really low spin rate or attempt hit one with a high spin rate and a low spin rate. And I'm also gonna spray this club with a little bit of this, this is called Dr. Scholl's Odor X foot spray powder. And it's just, makes a little white film on the club so we can tell where we hit it on the club face. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna try it on this first one to use my Flight Scope X3 here to measure the spin and the distance. Now I'm gonna to try to swing the same swing speed on both of these, or at least pretty close. And let's see how it goes. So the first one is gonna be my high spin rate shot. There you go, that thing really had a high spin rate. I don't, I don't know what it would be. That's kind of that slice that kind of balloons up. That's the one that doesn't do very good if you're looking for distance. Let me actually grab this other ball and then we'll grab the flight scope and take a look at those numbers. So this one, kind of tough to switch between making a swing like that and not trying to make a good swing, but I'm gonna try to make a good swing here and see if I can get some nice numbers and a lot more distance, preferably. Let's give it a whirl. I uh, didn't actually hit that one very good. I made that big slice swing and it kind of carried over into my, my next swing, but you're still gonna see here uh, the general concept. Let me actually go ahead and hit one more. So we'll see, there's my first one, very low on the face. There's my second one, a little high on the heel. I'm gonna do a little better than that. I think this video is gonna turn out a little bit better if I make a third swing and I hit it really nice and we can really see the extremes here. Let's try it out. All right, so on this one, I'm really gonna try to take the spin off and really get that ball going pretty far. Yeah, that was almost even a little extreme the other way. I think it's gonna have pretty low spin on that one. So let's try this out here with my flight scope, or let's take a look at it. Swing number one was 121 miles an hour. Swung pretty daggone hard on that one. 6,000 RPMs of spin. That's a lot of spin. That's that ball that kind of shot up and sliced, really had a lot of spin on it. My total distance was 227 carry. For 120 miles an hour clubhead speed, that is not very good. Swing number two was better. A little bit slower, 118 miles an hour. Brought the spin down to 3100, which isn't super low, but I went from, what was it, 220, all the way up to 284. By lowering the spin, by getting a better contact on the sweet spot, I got some more distance and more speed. The third swing, I had a really super low spin rate. I had 118.8 miles an hour clubhead speed. So again, still slower than the first one that went 224 carry, but that one carried 291. Even though I didn't hit it perfect, it still carried a long way. So what is it that's causing the lower spin? What is it that's causing the difference of almost, you know, a couple of those were almost 70 yards difference in distance. So the first question, actually the last one with the lower spin, the, the good thing about this is it actually rolled out a little bit more. It rolled out to two th or 338 because it was a low knuckler, whereas the first one would have come out to 239. So you're talking 100 yards total distance extra between the first swing that I made with a very high spin rate, the ball that shot up, and the last swing that I made. And the crazy thing about it is I swung three miles an hour slower on the one that went 100 yards farther. So it's not the swing speed, it's not the athleticism, something different is going on there with the contact. Let's go ahead and talk about it now. So on shot number one, I get this question a lot, am I just hitting down into it too much? So when I hit down into it, what happens is, now my club is glancing down on the ball and it's creating more backspin. So let me grab a ball here. If you can imagine that I'm taking this golf ball with my hand and I'm chopping down on it like this, really hitting down on it, that's gonna create backspin. That's really not gonna be very good for your distance. That's what I did in, in shot number one. Again, let me grab my flight scope here and we'll see my angle of attack, which basically, uh, I didn't get my angle of attack, but my angle of attack was definitely down on it. That's the first piece to more spin. If we look at, I'm guessing my angle of attack on that first one was almost like five degrees, seven degrees down, because I had that over the top down swing. The third one, my best one, my angle of attack on that one was 3.4 up. So I'm actually hitting up on it a little bit more. So by going from a, a downward strike to an upward strike, that helped me to get closer to that 100 yards extra distance. Now, the, the second thing is, 
what about where I hit it on the face? A lot of times, players don't really think about this enough, but where I hit this on the face doesn't only help me to hit it solid and to get more ball speed, it also helps to reduce the spin. When I hit it low on the face like this, what actually happens is, when I make contact, this ball is stuck to the driver face. So when I make contact below the center of gravity or low on the face like I did that first one, the one that was way shorter, the club actually twists down like this. And because the ball is stuck to the face, it actually makes the ball spin backwards more. It's like a gear. Whenever the club face twists down, that causes the ball to roll up and to create more backspin. Obviously not very good because it caused me to lose a lot of distance. The second ones we can see here, now I'm a little bit above the center of gravity. And what happens when I do that is the club face rotates back slightly and helps to put top spin or think of it like top spin. It's still back spin, but it makes less back spin. So that's the second piece there. Where am I hitting it on the face? Here's a nutshell. That's the number one, that's the number one factor. And in a nutshell, you can simplify all this. Where am I trying to aim? If you take the sweet spot, I'm trying to hit a quarter inch above the sweet spot and a quarter inch out on the toe. So a quarter inch up into the toe is where I want to hit that for the absolute perfect highest ball speed, lowest spin, longest distance drives. That's really where you want to be aiming. So if I'm hitting it low on the face, that's really going to kill the spin or it cause it to have tons of spin. I'm really going to kill my distance. What about different drivers? You know, you'll hear people say, oh, this is a really low sp spin driver. The only thing the driver is doing to make a lower spin or a higher spin driver is they're moving where the center of mass is or where the balance point of this driver is. Every driver has one point somewhere inside this head where its weight is completely balanced. And if I move that center mass lower and I, I take uh, more weight toward the bottom of the club, it promotes more of that backwards twisting like we got when we hit higher on the club face. So some drivers that are low spin drivers could affect the spin rates by maybe even two or 300 RPMs. You make the exact same swing and you get two or 300 RPMs less. But to be honest, that's not really gonna make a ton of difference. Having a low spin driver may take two or 300 RPMs off, but we saw there my high spin driver, my high spin swing, 6,000 RPMs. My low spin swing was 16 or 1700 RPMs. So we're talking, you know, 4,300 RPMs less two or 300 RPMs isn't gonna make that much difference. Sure, it'll give you a couple more yards, but for players that don't swing as fast, maybe that ball doesn't stay up in the air as long. So it could be even a little bit too low a spin for you. So in a nutshell there, the driver isn't gonna make a huge difference going between brand, brand to brand, but the loft will make a lot of difference. If I'm playing a driver that has a too high loft for me, then I could be getting too much backspin on it Kind of like you would with a wedge the more the more open the face the more it's going to create some backspin when i hit it now i don't see that very often i find that most players would benefit from having a driver with a little bit more loft as long as they hit it above the center center of gravity as long as they hit it a little high on the face i think that most players could probably add two or three degrees more loft to their driver. And as long as they hit it a little higher on the face, they're gonna get the farthest when they do that. Most players are just playing with a driver that simply doesn't have enough loft. You have to have a lot of swing speed to hit a low, lo low lofted driver high into the air and get it to go a long way. So we've talked about this, we've heard all the factors. Let's boil it down. What do I need to do to my swing to get that low swing speed shot that goes 100 yards farther, ideally? So let's grab a golf ball here again and I'm gonna talk about how we set up here very simply when I'm trying to get a little bit less spin. Number one is I wanna tee this ball up a little bit higher. I like to use these longer tees so I can tee it up any height that I want. And I tee it up a little bit higher. That way I can, can easily hit up on the ball. So I'm swinging up on the ball as I'm making contact. And when I'm hitting up on it, I'm still able to hit above the center of gravity. If you imagine my ball, ball is lower to the ground, Let's say that I have this ball teed up way down here and I try to hit up on it. Well, yeah, I could hit up on this ball, but now I'm hitting the bottom of the driver like I did on that first one, tons of spin. We don't want to do that. So a little higher tee. I want to put the ball a little bit more up in my stance. This is depending on the player, how far up you want to go. But you know, for me, I'll put it a little bit kind of around my left ankle if I'm trying to get a real high low spin one, high launching low spin. And then I'm going to feel like I have a little more weight on my back foot. So inside of my back foot at address, that's where I want to have my weight as I'm 
coming uh, at address. That way I feel like I can promote that more upward type swing path. Finally, and most importantly, I wanna feel like I hit a draw, a little bit of a draw, and I wanna feel like I get that contact above the sweet spot. That's the most important thing. If you think of nothing else, be visualizing a draw with that contact high on the face. The rest will kind of take care of itself. So one more swing here. Let's really give it a rip and I'm gonna to try to hit that ball that has that nice high draw with low spin. There we go, and that one definitely cut the corner on that one. That went a long way and that is not gonna have very much spin on it. Yeah, so that one, 2000 RPMs of spin, almost ideal. 304 carry, I'm not gonna do too much better than that. 340 total distance. So that ball came out high, knuckling, and because it didn't have much spin on it, when it hit, it, it ran versus landing and then stopping dead because all the spin stops it. So in a nutshell, that's the way to make it happen. Now, what I said there, the most important thing, if you only do one thing with any of this, we wanna swing more inside out to hit that draw, and we wanna hit a little higher on the face. That's the most important thing. If we can learn to hit a draw and hit it high on the face, we're not gonna ever have to worry about spin rates. That's why something that I call the move is one of the best things you can do to lower your spin. I have an awesome video talking about how you can shallow your club out with gravity. So as you start the downswing, you're gonna let this club shallow out with gravity, get it more from the inside, and it's gonna be coming down at an angle that allows you to hit up on it, that allows you to have that draw and allows you to hit higher on the face without even thinking about it. You just make this move and you're gonna have those high launching low spin drives. So I'll play a preview of that here in a second. You're gonna see it pop up on the screen. All you need to do is go ahead and click that button, or click that, that uh, picture and you're gonna be able to watch that video. We're gonna tie it all in together. Let's go and get started. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked about worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again, coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm gonna be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm gonna be